All right, welcome everyone to the Canadian Esports Championship Series podcast, also known as The Meltdown. I am Stefano Funky D. Disorti. I am joined by Darren iRobot Martin and Wes, Wes Rambo. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Wes, Wes Rambo, Rambo. Yeah. Wes, Perfect. Wes, don't call me Wes Rambo, Rambo, Rambo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that guy. We're with the him. Whole, the whole reason I didn't use a, like, alias in esports was just to be the most like brian kibler i possibly could because brian uh, kibler is the man and uh, you know so that people would start making brian kibler memes about me so once uh, that starts happening i know i've made it uh you see that, that well, that's the line for success now you've announced it so now you know we can start doing it yeah uh, exactly we know what yeah. you want <laughs> yeah now you know i i never shared with anyone i was just hoping it would happen organically but now it's been so long i just have to force it <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> Um, All right. So uh, we come today with this podcast to bring uh, you, the viewer at home, some news and updates, um, as well as we're going to talk about the uh, the League of Legends League that we were ha having as opposed to any of the other leagues. So the first thing uh, that we're going to announce, big, very important, later this August, somewhere around the middle, we're not having set on a, on a date finite, we're having... Huge, a uh, huge giveaway stream. We're going to be giving away lots of different things to viewers in chat. Um, this includes RP RP cards as well as different sort of incentives for you to get involved. So tell your friends, tell your parents, tell your grandparents. Say, "Wow, my favorite esports cha championship series is hosting uh, is hosting a big giveaway stream." Tune in. They're going to tune in. You're going to tune in. You guys are going to get some free stuff. It's going to be great. On our Discord, uh, Mel is like compulsively posting. That's Mel, the uh, director of the company, is uh, um, compulsively posting like different merch drops, and like she'll just get a random inland AV drop off, and or like a Red Bull drop off at her house. So she she just has like, as far as I can tell, like a garage full of merch from our sponsors, which yeah. we're like we always say like okay i guess we'll just give this away sometime so this stream is going to we're going to burn through a whole bunch of that merch so yeah if you're into red bull and you know no frills like you can get some groceries uh in land av probably some stuff there so like I i'm not i'm not guaranteeing any of that stuff but that stuff is probably going to be there so you should tune in yeah. uh that's just twitch.tv slash manitoba underscore esports uh it'll be on the main main stream yeah there you are thank you wes uh Two other th uh, other thing that I wanted to mention uh, about the uh, upco upcoming uh, new new season of the CSA is we've actually partnered with two different uh, two different charities. Uh, the first is Tilt to Fly. They're very um, they're very very good. They do a lot of stuff with gaming, mm -hmm. a lot of ways to help um, gamers. Just an overall great organization. And the other one is Jack, uh, Jack.org. They are a charity that is all about mental health. Um, they're huge, uh, they're hugely influential with young people. So definitely a great cause, cause there. Um, you can look into them as well, but stay tuned. We're going to be partnered with them. We'll have a lot more resources for them, uh, going forward in the future. So yeah, I was looking, yeah. oh, sorry, if I may, no, you I was just ahead, looking into, um, yeah, looking into tiltify.com um and it looks like they are a platform for fundraising so yeah. if anyone is fundraising for a different charity yeah. you can host your stream there um back from my uh, playing a lot of Fortnite days i saw dr lupo on there he's always raising money for saint jude uh, children's hospital mm -hmm. i think that's just in the states but there's a there's a bunch of them on there right now it looks like a really really great platform that's uh, doing a lot of good in the world so yeah that's like one that a, i looked into anyway they're like a charity aggregate kind of so yeah mm -hmm. they they basically connect people with the different charity programs that they can or, or fundraising programs that they can cooperate with so it kind of gives us it's nice to partner with a group like that because it gives the cecs sort of the option where it's like okay this we want to we, we, we this time we want to help out like a children's hospital and this time we want to help out like a mental health initiative so yeah it's you know gives gives different options and that's really nice i also like jack.org i mean any it's i think that pairing um pairing a gaming event with a mental health initiative is great because a lot of us have just been sitting in our homes gaming and like everybody's mental health has been affected by the pandemic and you know video games are a way for some of us to it, it can 
it can be detrimental to some of us to get too into video games. I know from personal experience that can happen to me, but it can also be like an incredible aid to your mental health because it's a way to connect with people. So like any sort of cooperation with a mental health program uh, that that's helping out, you know, people who are struggling. I, I think it's just like it's just a perfect fit. Wes, once again, being exactly right. Uh, <laughs> huge shout out to Jack.org. Um, and I think the final thing I wanted to mention to you, um, to you guys at home, is that uh, we, um, for registration for the Community League is going to be starting soon. So that is going to be our League of Platinum and Below. It's the mm -hmm. same league that we had last season. Here. Um, just good times all around. Register yeah. for that. Register for that with your friends. Invite your grandma as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a great time. And I know that uh -huh. our our buddy Logan, uh, aka your favorite uh, Zareth main Lucan, uh, sorry, your favorite uh, uh, Prowler's Claw Yorick main Lucan, is uh -huh. going to be uh, is going to be sort of spearheading that, if I'm not mistaken. That was kind of yeah. what we had discussed, and so yeah, he's gonna, you know, he'll, he'll, you can keep an eye on the Discord for updates and stuff. But the Community League is uh, what we sort of it's kind of to our roots of like very community based the prize pool isn't high it's like a very much just getting people together to play league of legends because what we heard from a lot of people was like we don't need we, we don't need a prize a big prize pool to be incentivized to play from a lot of the core people in our community who yeah are in that like platinum and below range they still want a chance to play without having to worry about make putting ranked restrictions that always get weird and awkward and are hard to enforce with with volunteers uh onto our main events which we'll talk about in a bit but yeah the community league is going to be for the for the core group and for anybody platinum and below who wants to you know come hang out and have a good time and play league in a place where they don't have to be matched up against you know diamond one yeah. players and like challenger smurfs and stuff and they don't have to play against like yunbi and kept <laughs> <laughs> um dude most most academy mid laners don't even want to play against yunbi exactly yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> so nice. registration is going to be open that um keep your eyes open it's going to be happening soon so look discord social media you guys um you guys know what to do mm -hmm. and i think that's the final announcement we have to make uh wes i think you might have one yeah, well, we can talk a little bit about I, I I can talk a little bit about like what's going on with me at CECS, which is that I kind of I've been getting a lot of opportunities. A lot of people sort of in the community have been encouraging me to do this and to and pushing me to do this, and you know I resisted for a bit because it's scary. But I am trying to branch out into becoming a freelance uh, professional caster, so and broadcast piece of member of broadcast talent with tournaments so that's Let's something go. that yeah you Woo. know it's been it's been very exciting it's been something i've been sort of it's been ruminating for a while and finally i've felt the uh, that i have sort of the time and the resources and that i've got a little bit of experience where i can do it so i yeah i've done a few a few indie events a few community events i'm doing my first like by far the highest level event I've done so far is what one that's ongoing right now, which is the MSI Dragon Cup, which does contain some uh, 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 the U of M team right now, coached by our uh, our buddy Tay Thalys Keenan, and uh, Kept is on there, Rodov is on there, uh, so that's like it's pretty cool. It's like you know still amateur league, but there are, there's like grandmasters, challengers all over the place in this tournament. And there's like 39 teams, so that's I'm casting with this really great caster named Zephyr, who's done uh, a bunch of riot events. So that's the biggest one I've done so far, but I've got more lined up. So yeah, um, th that said, I've been doing that and kind of focusing on that, which means unfortunately that I have to take a pretty gigantic step back from my work at the Canadian Esports Championship Series, where I was the broadcast director this past season in the inaugural series for all of the games. <laughs> so I was yeah. trying to set up broadcast and like bless his freaking heart oblivion uh, from the Rocket League community. I ended up just not being able to deal with everything and Oblivion just like stepped up big time and dealt with like so much of the Rocket League stuff. He put on a whole bunch of the streams by himself. Uh, so yeah, I dropped the ball there and he picked it up, which was awesome. Um, but it, even then with just the three games, it was way too much for me anyway. And uh, now with this stuff, I'm just not going to be able to do basically any of that at all. So I'll still be back uh, to events that we have as a caster as much as I can if there aren't any conflicts and stuff. But in general, I'm not going to be doing the broadcast directing unless if like 
there's a huge event where I'm called upon to come in again, you know, with where the, where we need all hands on deck kind of thing. Other than that, yeah, I'm going to be a caster only, which means in particular for League of Legends, we got our buddy Steph up here with the hair who is going to be taken over for that. So, uh, yeah, Stefano, how do you feel about being uh, being put into the, well, sort of, you know, sort of slowly transitioning into the position of uh, broadcast director for League of Legends? Uh, well, I'm very excited. You know, I got big shoes to fill. Um, so I, I guess size I... nine. It's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, size nine. Just have to show off. I'm yeah. Size four. <laughs> wow. Look, uh, at this, um, look at the big boy. <laughs> the big deal. Over here. Um, <laughs> no. So obviously, I'm very excited to be working as uh, the head of broadcasting for CS um, CCS. So. Um, Everyone that's in the league, if you would normally message Wes about something, please, I cannot stress this enough, do not message Wes about this. I mean, it's not you can message me, I just won't respond. <laughs> yeah. <it's> <laughs> like, exactly. if I'm really having a nice day, I'll I'll direct you to Stefano, or I just won't respond. I'll, I'll be like, I'm just a con I, I just work here, man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and if you, and if you for, for some reason, decide you want to message me about something, I will refer you to Wes. And That's he right. Will refer yeah. You to <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, Darren doesn't have it. Darren and, and Stefano aren't friends on Discord, so they can't DM each other. It's an old no. feud. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. we yeah. have yeah. to go so yeah, through a middleman. It's, it's, it's not yeah. personal. It's just I hate him. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No big deal. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So shoot all your messages. Uh. Shoot all your messages to me. I will answer them if I can. Um. Don't be shy. Um. Don't be shy about asking. Um. The broadcasting, hopefully, you won't notice too much of a difference, I say, yeah. as in I won't it won't be burning down. So it shouldn't change that much on the viewer side, but if you're a player, have any questions, just mm -hmm. shoot them my way. Yeah, I I'll say the broadcast like, you know, I was arranging for all the pieces to be put together, but uh you know, everybody, you you knew when I was the one who had to take on the reins of production instead of someone like Kieran or Cassie or or Dylan. Uh, those are the those are the the tech whizzes. So in terms of like, yeah, how it looks, it shouldn't change much. We'll probably improve things. I know all those producers we've got have always got like kind of the gears turning to make things better. So yeah, don't worry too much about that. Not much is going to change. Stefano's going to do great, but that is, it is important. I'm glad you said it, uh, Stefano, that I won't be able to field questions about like league administrative things anymore. Yeah. And uh, with that, I think that's all the league stuff that we wanted to talk about. Um, so there is just now the matter of breaking down or breaking down, I say, the last season of uh, of the Community League. Which was months ago, and yeah, yeah you know, yeah. we will... We're very good at this, <laughs> We'll yes. do what we can, and we'll maybe, like, talk uh, about... I feel like we could just talk about, like, some, some of the fun we had and some of the, like, stuff that happened that was really, you know... I don't know. I mean, with these leagues, you know, it's not so much about, like... It, like we we you never end up remembering the grand finals like you always just end up remembering like a moment here a moment there from all these different uh, parts of the league and like who you know <laughs> who overperformed who underperformed kind of thing but uh man stefano i got to say you are you might be one who, to have to jog my memory a bit because there's a lot like i don't remember that much of it i i, <laughs> I it's it was it's been a while yeah i mean there's a lot of different moments um just around the board. I think we had, at the beginning of the league, we had one, seven different teams. Right. Um, so, you know, obviously, like, um, we, had a, we had a fair amount of players in different teams, but I want to ask you guys, is there anyone, like, any one person specifically that you saw that really made an impression on you? Or is um, that you want to see either come back or you want to see more of? Or was... Uh, was it kind of more of just like a team thing? Like, it wasn't one person, but, you know, I really want to see Kazu Reformed um, yeah. come back. Well, I know that some people aren't coming back for whatever reason. Like, they haven't got, um, like, they're not, you know, that they, they don't have the uh, uh, time to come back or whatever their case. But one person that I really loved watching was Jay Beach. Uh, oh, yeah. Player for, um, yeah, for, uh, uh, um, who is, who, what was the name was, of the team again? It was... It was I'm pulling up right oh, now. It was, I think it was Boomer Mechanics only, right? Yeah, it was BMO, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he was just like... 
so good the whole time and also like we were shouting about we gave him like this big like hype up on stream one time because he like really had a great game and then he came into the discord and was like hey guys just wanted to let you guys know my dad was watching and he thought i paid you all off to give me that like segment because we did like a whole post game segment about how like jay beach is the best player on the team he's the best jungler in the league <laughs> we were just yes. like, like full on it has to have sounded to his dad like we were literally like like he came and told us my dad's watching do what you will with that info and then we were just like jay beach is the best league of legends player ever to touch a pc yeah. but like we didn't know that his dad was watching at all it was just like a nice yeah. performance and i just like the guy so yeah yeah i wish uh, i wish i i i i probably wasn't there that week i missed a, yeah. a few um definitely several games throughout the season um but for me I don't know. There's there's a lot of really good players in this in this league. Um, I really enjoyed watching um, the um, casually reformed bot lane, Murphy oh. and Harley. Ooh, yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Just because um, they were so aggressive. Um, so. And Harley was mechanically really great. I mean, Murphy was as well, but it was always Harley. Just like, I remember him playing Jinx and just like mm -hmm. standing way too far up and like going for going for stuff he had no right to go for, but he would mechanically outplay them. Uh, he, it was a very, he was, he, he always to me was like a very high risk player, right? He would go in, try to get fed, try to get the kills. Very, very aggressive. And that, that to me is always really fun to watch, um, especially when the player is mechanically gifted. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really, I really liked uh, that that duo lane, and actually the bot lane on many teams was very strong this this season. So it was really fun to watch that lane in general, to kind of kind of um, you know league wide. Yeah, um, I I agree. I think um, my my favorite stuff or uh, my favorite stuff as well was I think in general the bot lane this season. I think yep. uh, I think the in in season one was the was the season of mid laners. You know we had mm, yeah. Yumi, we had Rodolf, who was mid. Just every we had Cap Shade House. Like everyone that was yeah. mid was like That's true. really yeah. like stupidly good. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I think like we to a lesser extent, but similarly, we got something like that bot lane. I don't think we had a bad bot lane like in mm. the entire league. Yeah, like there was definitely bot lanes that were you know on top like um on top like uh. Like Bo um, Bog and George Foreman Grill, they had a really strong bot lane. Uh, mm -hmm. Same, same with uh, Birds Are Real, but it yeah. wasn't. There was ne wasn't really a weak bottom lane. And all all the, the team, league. like none of the teams, had bot lane as their weak side, which is yeah, exactly. weird. Like it's not like competitive play. Like you all obviously you want a good bot lane, but there was like the. The result of that was lots of like action in the bot lane all the time, lots of dives, lots of ganks, and that like some teams in competitive play just don't do that. Like they don't, they just like yeah. let their they, they they just have passive bot lane. They play for mid jungle duo, or they you know maybe they like have some day and then they play for top. Like competitive teams, yeah. you know, don't don't always have that. It's very rare to see like this many teams gathered together where all of them use bot lane as strong side. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. We had a we had a super super interesting league. But as for as for favorite moments go, I think it's just got to be Ginsberg playing Kaisa or Samira, just either yeah. one, because he was so good, but he was so bad. The scoreline would time. be like fourteen, fourteen, and two. <laughs> exactly. There was, there was no middle ground. Yeah. I've never seen someone alt into the enemy team with as much confidence as didn't like, I remember it, I have now that you say that it jogs a specific memory of like like so so bot bot lane near the enemy base you've he's got vision from a W he sends into their base while both the inhibitor and inner turrets yes. are still are still up and he goes in he does that there's none of his team have broken anywhere near 
the base. They're just invading the jungle, and he literally goes into their base past both turrets to one-shot the enemy AD carry. And then he's like, well, I guess I'm guess I'll die. Like he's just yeah. now in there having <laughs> assassinated. And his team's way ahead. Like he does not need to trade one for one. But it's just like the sh the Dins bag does. The sorry, yeah. I'll we'll bleep that out on the video. But yeah, they, uh, <laughs> the uh the stuff that Dins bag does, yeah. And it, it was definitely, you know, uh, yeah, it it's almost like you're almost cheating if you choose like a Dinsbag moment as your favorite moment of the season. Yeah, that, but you're fair. choosing like uh, broadly yeah. Dinsbag's play in the season, and I think that's yeah. legit. <laughs> Specifically his play as two characters. The like the 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 two of the, like the four AD carries that had just have the yeah. all in buns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think overall, uh, just to talk about like teams that were fun to watch. I mean, I I just think that Scoop City was always fun to watch. Um, yeah, it felt like it felt like sometimes they weren't even playing to win; they were just playing to meme. But they were so good that they, yeah. you know what I mean, that they were at the top of the league and were contenders for a for while. The top. For a while, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it ended it up was... pretty low. It it you know the coin <laughs> flip went there. It didn't go their way uh, that That's much true. leading up to playoffs. Yeah, but they were um, they were always fun to watch, and Dinsbag was obviously a big a big part of that. Um, but uh, I need to look here again. But I mean, their their whole team was. Uh, I mean, their bot lane was great too, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. and ADC was excellent, and yep. uh, Aldre was their support, right? Uh, uh yes. Yeah. Or was Aldre their jungle? Oh, uh, they had like a six man roster, and they kept switching. It's really hard. Yeah, they okay. Well, Dinsbeg played ADC too sometimes. Yeah, so it doesn't. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm I'm confused. But yeah, so they I were see. they were always. We always knew. That when Scoop City was in the lineup to play on the weekend, that we were going to have a good time. Yeah, uh, exactly. and, and and that our casters were going to be very tired by yeah. the end because well, there was going to be a lot was, of action. The the play by play caster was always exhausted. The yeah, yeah, exactly. caster was like, I don't know, man. Because they invaded level one every <laughs> single time. That's why I yeah. kind of liked watching them play against the birds aren't real, who were like dominating everybody. Because like you just never know, like what what's <laughs> happening in that level one fight. It, who knows? Yeah. Like it's it's that... just not. <laughs> Sorry, I, I have a harder time remembering little moments f from everything. Um, but when you said that, I remember now the one level one that was so hype when they all were starting on. Um... Wow, I'm such a noob. Uh, which side is blue side and which side is red side? Blue side's the bottom side? That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. Okay, so they start blue side. They go through blue bottom tri bush into the river bush in bot lane flash over at least three or four of them flashed yeah. over into the tri bush That's on red right. side yeah. <laughs> yeah, i remember this yeah this and is like one of their first level games one. like one of yeah, their first is... games yeah. in the season yeah <laughs> yeah and i think i think they got one or two kills maybe just one mm -hmm. and maybe the blue buff but then but then the caster and analyst or i don't remember who it was they were like was that worth it though they blew four flashes <laughs> yeah, to was, get was, that one kill in blue buff or whatever and, but it was me and natural casting and okay uh, yeah I, like i was so when you <laughs> when you're casting you got to do this thing especially when it's like a pretty like like an amateur league or like a, a community league you gotta you gotta like always give a little bit of a boon to teams where it's like oh yeah wow you know like instead of just constantly being like this is the wrong move this is the wrong move this is the you got to be like oh yeah you know these are going to be the repercussions of this and like what kind of advantages do they have the potential to gain from this and so i'm kind of doing that and natural's just like the west they blew all their flash like the this they they did this for like one red buff or something like he, he was just like yeah. dumbfounded because he's like really knows the game and plays at a very high level and so he, like, he was like what is what did i get myself into here if, if i remember correctly i i love that game so much because after they all burnt their flashes they proceeded to like in the next five minutes the yep. score was like seven out or something like yep. they just got completely rolled because yep. them every had single one of them got punished for not having flash yeah, that was so <laughs> yeah. good I feel like it was maybe even against birds aren't real. I think so. Uh, yeah, I like think it was so. against a, a really good team. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like they yeah. weren't doing it against the bottom tier teams, you know. Like so, it was pretty ballsy. Yeah, uh, oh, but geez, definitely stuff. memorable. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, for the community league as we come up, you know, don't want Luke to tear his hair out when he sees this, but man, like that's the kind of stuff we want to see because it, <laughs> it's not, it's not like. You know, yeah, there there isn't a lot on the line for this community league. It really is just for people to gather together and play League of Legends against each other in an organized fashion with like their friends and stuff. That's like the whole point of it. So, you know, 
I think I think a little shenanigans, a little off meta, a little bit of business like that. It has its place in this uh, upcoming community league. That's for sure. Yeah. Too too bad Logan's not playing this time. I feel like lethality York mid. That's that's what this league needs more of. Prowler's yeah. Claw even got nerfed, and he still plays that. I think right. Oh my dude! The other game he built like he went Thresh mid and built like some of the most degenerate. It was like Rift Maker <laughs> or something. I was just I was like, oh, this, Rift is, this Maker. is my life now. <laughs> it, it was something like it was so dumb. He's like. The release of Anathema's Chains unlocks this Thresh build I've been theory crafting for years. <laughs> he's like yeah, a it's... Drift Maker into Anathema's Chains into like he's just Night's every Street. anime villain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, that's great. That's good stuff. Yeah, I'm excited for yeah. it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Well, I mean, so we can talk. We have there's probably been some announcement, Stefano, but we can probably talk since we've talked about the community community league about uh like at least the bare bones of our new format uh, that in, in the coming seasons, I, I was that one of my last sort of uh, actions as the, um, the broadcast director and a member of the administrative team was to advocate for this system, which we all ended up agreeing on, which was to do instead of leagues. Now for all games, we are going to do instead a series of tournaments where it's like every few months the, the game repeats and the tournament results can affect your standing in future tournaments and there's a prize pool for each one uh, maybe a separate sponsor that's why tiltify is so great because we can have like a different charity for each one if we want type of thing none of this is like super set in stone yet as, as i understand but this was the initial pitch and so yeah it, it's going to give us a lot more freedom to try stuff and to change things up instead of being locked into a league that you know stretches on for months where if something's going wrong or if something's not as uh, optimized as we want it then we can't change it because we already established the rules so i think basically like this is like a win 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 situation to change to these tournaments it's what most organizers do anyway especially amateur leagues so i'm really excited about it you know i'm gonna like i said be taking a step back but i think that this project uh for the canadian esports championship series where it it's standalone events uh over the over time and taking breaks in between them uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and it is going to allow for those people who have been requesting all these different games like CSGO, like uh, uh, Apex, these types of things. It's going to give that those games a potential to come through for our league as well. Yeah, um, to elaborate a little bit more, because we, we, do, we do have uh, some planned out. We can't confirm a lot, but yeah. Uh, as, yeah, as was was saying, uh, he's definitely right. We are going to be getting more games now, uh, is the plan. Um Additionally, how how the structure is going to work is it's basically going to be uh, a new tournament for a new game every month. So, yeah. like as an example, this is I can't stress this enough. Don't make your schedules. This is not what we're doing. But as an example, we might have like a league tournament in September, a Rocket League in October, yeah. um, Valorant November, and then Apex Legends December, and then we put another league one in January, and we'd start over, mix things up, keep things fluid. Um, so it's very important with this system is we need your guys' feedback. We want to know what kind of tournaments you guys want run. Um, we have lots of different uh, people want it, wanting in from all different games. So really uh, let us know what you want, either in Discord, mm -hmm. on Instagram, however you communicate us. Let us know what games you want, um, you want, and we'll see if we can make it happen. Yeah, something you learn as, the, uh, as a, a person who is administrating and dealing with, like, different people who are interested in the projects you're doing and stefano i'm sure not you have some idea of this but we'll definitely learn it in a big way as you go forward is that you definitely cannot make everybody happy all at the same time uh, yeah it's just literally not possible to do so the, yeah this is also a way to just sort of let more people in yeah and it, it it's it's cool because you know then we can take a lot of time to like w you know we with the resources we had and the fact that everybody's a volunteer and everybody, you know, everybody's just doing this kind of out of the love of esports and the goodness of their hearts, uh, you can't like getting a broadcast team together like <laughs> four days a week at least is ridiculous undertaking. And so this is going to be one tournament over the course of like a week or a weekend, like a, like a, a much more con concerted, much more concentrated 
event where we can plan the entire month. Okay, this is going to this is the time commitment. This is the broadcast team. And honestly, I think you, we can put on a much better broadcast this way as well as just run a better event because we don't have to worry about having admins day after day, week after week at every single game to make sure everything's fine and you know every every all the teams are happy. So yeah, this this format I think makes a lot of sense and I think it will just improve the product overall. I, I'd like to ask a question because I am not in in the know on mm -hmm. these things. Um, I'm just a humble host. Uh, is there any plans for any kind of live events as we're coming out of the pandemic or are we keeping things online? Are we allowed to talk about anything? Should we, just, should we just rub our hands together and then... Yeah, just maniacally laugh. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you, I'll, because Stefano will know more, so I'll let him go after. I'll tell you what I learned from like the meetings, the preliminary meetings after the season ended, and that is that we have partnerships in the works with people who are able to host live events such as venues and uh and tech places that are able to get us connections and get us get us uh, hardware and stuff so like the capability and the desire to do a live event is there big time it's just a question of the logistics at this point so yeah i think that a live event like i'll say this just like based on but you know, I I'm not an authority of the league anymore. But I will say that based on what the meetings I was in, a live event within a year is not only likely; it's almost inevitable. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, it is. Now you we know. are <laughs> live events are for sure happening. As Wes said, it is just a question of when. Mm -hmm. Um. Unfortunately, I don't actually believe I am allowed to say a lot more about it. Yeah. Um. But I can confirm, live events are coming. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to play some video games together all in the same room, yep. and we're going to have a great time. It's happening. We're all going to uh, hold hands. Yeah, exactly. We we're going to yeah. sing Kumbaya as well, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. collectively. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're going to play That's DDR, really exciting. but both two people on the same board of DDR. That's going to yeah, be exactly. a sports event. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm really excited for that. Um, mm -hmm to be a part of it. Um, now, why also, are you so excited about that, Darren? Uh, I'm excited about that because uh, I don't know if people knew, but um, I've been in Edmonton for for a while uh, during the pandemic. Um, but my now fiance, that also happened recently. So that's very exciting. Oh, congratulations. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we're obviously very happy and excited, um, but we are moving back to Winnipeg. We were here for some family stuff, uh, but we're coming back just in time for the pandemic to calm right the heck down uh, and for there to be potential live events uh, for me to be a part of is uh, uh, very, very exciting um, for so many reasons, but that I will actually be there to uh, be a part of it and that that makes me very happy, so. It's looking good. Like Manitoba yeah. had the least cases in months yesterday. I think it was yeah, like 30. Yeah, 26. 26, yeah. yeah. So like yeah, it's, it's good. looking good. Fingers crossed. Big knock on wood. Uh, yep. I have more to say about that, but I'll, I'll save that for a different podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. And I think that just about wraps it up, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so once again, to the viewers at home, Big things to keep in mind uh, from this podcast is, um, all right. So we're gonna need to we're gonna need to edit that part out. That's just, yes. No <laughs> way. We made the whole thing without <laughs> up, and then the last sentence. Yes, that's so good. Uh, you got all it. Right. Right. All right, Liz. Well, yeah, um, yeah. Let's let's do a quick recap of uh, what we have talked about today. Yeah. Uh, that's a good idea. Uh, that's a good way to do it. See, I, I, I was thinking that, and then I went to go do that, and then <laughs> it was not there. Nothing. Yeah, yeah it's just <laughs> not there. Um, all right. So, um, yeah, if you guys want to do it, by all means, you guys are. Uh, I mean, I, I, I can. At talking. You, yeah, like you know, one thing we can do probably is like there will be text updates and stuff and there will be um uh like links on make sure you're follow, like on the discord and following our social media and also probably by the way stefano before we go what is that giveaway stream like are we are we just going live like this 
just chatting or like not go, we're not live right now but are we just chatting and giving things away or is, is there going to be like a game being played or something like that do, or do, is that not uh that's not uh, out in the open yet i don't think that's out in the open yet all right well, um then, yeah, say no more yeah just unfortunately there's going yeah, to we, be a stream and we will yeah there will be away. a stream that's and all, you will have know. lots of chances for giveaways <laughs> great um cool yeah, well, yeah, it's gonna be a stream in August, you said? Mid, and... Mid-August. mid We're looking around uh, second, third week of August. So August, give or take, 15th-ish, uh, or I guess 13th-ish to 20th is when sure. we'll be looking at having that. Mid mid to late August. And then there's the, um, uh, pardon me, there's, of course, the new format that will be coming up. You can keep an eye out for that. Um, we did a quick, you know, post, uh, we did a quick talk about the league. Um, and we are partnering with Jack.org. Jack.org. Is that right? Jack.org. Jack.org and Tiltify.com. Those two, uh, chari- Tiltify, the charity aggregate, Jack.org, the mental health initiative. Uh, those two programs we're going to be partnering with for future events. Um, and Stefano, did I miss anything there? Uh, I think you hit, oh no, you did miss one thing. Oh. Uh, registration is coming soon for the Community League. Yes. Um, well, it's going to be within the ne- next few weeks, so once again, keep your eyes peeled on social media as well as on your Discord. We'll have all the great updates. All right. Well, all right. yeah, uh, thanks Thanks for having me on, Stefano. Thanks for yeah. having me on, new broadcast director of the League of Legends. Yeah, no, R- welcome. Yeah. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Coming, uh, random civilian. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> at RamboCast on Twitter. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, thank Plug. you once again, Darren, from phoning in all the way from Edmonton. You won't oh, have thanks, to do this man. much longer. No. Um, I think that is, <laughs> I think that is going to be the end of it. So Darren, do you want to sign us off with your classic sign off? All right, everybody. As the pandemic winds down, big knock on wood. Still. Stay safe. Stay salty. Stay salty. Good night. Goodbye. <laughs> the echo. All right. <laughs>